All right, welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel with our continuing coverage with Hurricane Dorian. Um, we are looking at a storm that is starting to get a little disorganized and weaken as we speak. So let's go ahead and give a quick update on Dorian. We had the two o'clock update and I'm gonna give a quick shout out to Mari for doing an awesome job at making sure that you guys are getting the information accurate and correctly. Uh, I've been listening from afar today and thank you very much Mari for help keeping this information uh, coming out with integrity, that's for sure. So for the three o'clock update, the winds are at 110, that's 110 miles per hour with a pressure of 959. Uh, it is moving northwest at five miles per hour. And according to the last few tracks that I had seen, uh, this thing is moving in the direction that we all want to see. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at GFS. And that was earlier. Um, actually, I want to refresh this to make sure that we have the most up-to-date forecast here on the GFS uh, tropical tidbits. There's our storm. It's at 960 pressure on the map. It's just about exact. Okay, what's going on here? This screen is not moving. All right. So looking at this current hurricane track coming up, and also I want to um, I want to show you guys the storm surge warnings right now that are being issued. The Jacksonville area, storm surge, four to seven feet. Uh, right now, Melbourne, Jupiter, Fort Lauderdale, you're all two to five feet of storm uh, storm surge. Two, four to seven feet is quite a bit, not as much as what we saw down in the Bahamas though. So that's the silver lining of this warning. Again, this is a warning. So let's take a look at the cone for the tropical storm force winds. now. Obviously, the entire state of Florida is going to be experiencing that. And South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia even, New Jersey, D.C., uh, you guys will see it, and possibly New York City, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, parts of New, New Hampshire and the southern part of Maine will see, will see tropical uh, force winds by Saturday. So this storm reaches Nova Scotia by Saturday, 8 p.m., and we're still expecting tropical force winds with this as well. Uh, let's get a look at our recent track for this complete hurricane. Here is the radar. If I can get that to go in motion, that would be awesome. And this is one of the things I asked Mari uh, earlier when I made a phone call to her. And I asked her, I said, is this storm looking like it's turning into an oval shape? And she said, yes. And if you look at this storm right now as it's moving northwest and it's getting ready to go all the way just due north now, this storm is doing exactly the same thing that Irma did when Irma made its pass, became oblong uh, and, and it gained speed. So right now the intensity is a cat two, very possibility this thing dips all the way to a cat one. We were expecting a cat two uh, landfall for South Carolina and North Carolina. And at this point, I would have to believe that we are possibly looking at a situation to where uh, it might be just a Cat 1 or even just a tropical storm by the time it gets to North Carolina. Let's transition back here while we wait for that to load up. But again, we are dealing with a Cat 2 storm with winds at 110 miles per hour. It is moving northwest at five miles per hour with a millibar pressure of around nine, I'm sorry, a pressure of 959 millibars. So this storm is continuing to weaken, thankfully. It is moving away from the Bahamas. The, the, research, the recovery and rescue has now begun in that area. Help is being sent to the areas that need it the most, of course. And as the all safe sign has not yet been given, but we're getting there. Uh, so hopefully, the, the thoughts and prayers that everyone has done for that area ends up turning out to be a good thing and get these folks the help that they need. Also, I want to mention real quick, we're still looking at a sunspot. I don't really expect it to last past tomorrow. Honestly, it looks like it was decaying earlier. Uh, it is part of the solar cycle 24 and solar wind speeds are now leveling off as well, but still high at 616.4 kilometers per second. KP is at a two as well. So. Guys, by any means, this storm 
uh, is I'm not saying it's time to exhale and and uh, and, and whatnot, but it is a lot um, weaker than what we had seen in the past. So good news there for us is that um, the storm is weakening as it makes approach. But like I showed you guys a minute ago, we still have hurricane warnings and surge feet and flood warnings as well to deal with with this storm as it continues its path. So with that being said, um, we're gonna go ahead and get back to the uh, live chat. We don't really expect to jump in and I'm sure Mario will give us updates as we go on through the afternoon. Right now, this is just a waiting game. We've got past that stage of this storm moving away from the Bahamas. We are still watching this storm as it's moving northwest, but as predicted, this storm should make that north, that more north turn here in the next several hours. I know some of you in Jacksonville, Florida and Southern Georgia are getting a little anxious right now. But I think we should have a little trust and faith. The models so far have been correct. The storm has turned. It has went northward. The eye of the storm has stayed off of the coastline of Florida, which was good because really till about two or three days ago, we didn't know which way it was going to go. All right. With that being said, guys, have a great afternoon. Thank you for tuning into the Grand Solar Minimum channel, and we will talk soon.